they want to win the European Cup Winners' Cup. Can Arsenal do it tonight? Well, in fact, something very much like it has been done. In 1977, Liverpool lost the cup final on the Saturday, and then four days later, won the European Cup in Rome. To emulate that, Arsenal tonight must overcome Valencia of Spain, a real cup-fighting team managed by that former prince of players, Alfredo Di Stefano, and with two great international stars in the team, Mario Kempes of Argentina, who was voted the number one player in the last World Cup, and Rainer Bonhoff, the brilliant West German. Arsenal came through to tonight's final by beating Juventus in Turin with a goal just two minutes in time from a man who came on as a substitute, 20-year-old Paul Vesson. That goal meant that Arsenal were the first British club ever to win in Turin and it put them in the Cup Winners' Cup final for the first time in their history. The competition was founded exactly 20 years ago and in that time only five British clubs have won the Cup. Spurs, West Ham, Manchester City, Chelsea, and Glasgow Rangers. Oddly enough, Rangers, the last British club to do it, were knocked out of this year's competition by Arsenal's rivals tonight. After a draw in Spain, Valencia came to Ibrox and beat Rangers 3-1, including these two goals from Kempis. Back tracking again, Kempis trying to go around, and he scored! Kempis! Trying to get it to the touch of the player, and... Uh, this effective game that McLean had in the first half, not just as effective in this second 45 minutes. Watson, Kempis. Oh, that's it. Now, just before we go live to the Heisel Stadium in Brussels to join John Motson and Bob Wilson, a quick word here in our London studio from Jimmy Hill, and I'll leave it to him to introduce his guest. Well, I'm sure they need no real introduction. Laurie McMenemy, fresh from his success in predicting the winners of the Cup Final on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and Trevor Brooking, fresh from two successes, winning the Cup Final with West Ham and being part of that marvellous performance last night with England. First of all, Trev, our congratulations. That was tremendous. Yeah, thanks, Jim. No, all the lads were very pleased. A great result. And uh, it's just the fillet we needed, really, with Rome coming up in the next month. Well, let's hope Arsenal can continue it tonight. But do you think they're going to do that? I hope so, because they've uh, had a fantastic season, especially the last couple of months, and to win in Juventus was a great result. And uh, I think to, event, to end the season with nothing will be uh, well, very disappointing for the lads and all their supporters. And I think uh, they've got a lot of character in the side and don't see any reason why, if they get off to a good start in the game, that they can get the result we want. There's been a lot of talk about tiredness, and I know a lot of people don't understand that footballers get tired. They say, well, they're paid, you know, and they train as athletes, and they should play five or six times a week. Do they get tired? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think Saturday in the cup final, the fact that we went ahead, um, you know, mentally any tiredness that was there will then be brought out. It was a hot day. Uh, tonight being an evening game, hopefully it you know, won't have so much effect and they'll be that little bit sharper. And uh, they realise it's a big one now. I mean, the disappointment of Saturday, they, they want to get the result as well. And uh, I'm hopeful that the lads will. I think the main thing is if they, they don't sit back too much, obviously it's going to be a patient game, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd like to see that they've got a lot of uh, flair players, such as Graham Ricks and Liam Brady, and I'd like to see them push forward tonight and turn on a good performance. Lovely, so would we. Laurie? Sure, I agree with everything Trevor said. I think possibly Arsenal will get more respect, you know, Valencia, than they did off West Ham. Yeah. Uh, that result in the event is, uh, shook Europe right round because nobody ever goes there and wins. And yeah. uh, I would agree with Trevor, I think we need to see more uh, more of the flair players, uh, Graham Ricks was disappointed on Saturday, and Liam Brady, I don't think he'll need any incentive tonight. I mean, they all want to win a cup. Uh, mm. I think we all want them to win one of the two. They lost one on Saturday. But I think Brady more than anybody, because he's probably in the shop window, the biggest shop window that he can have. Yeah. You know, in right other words, Europe, uh, they'll be looking at him tonight. He can virtually sell himself for a lot of money That's tonight. right. Yes, exactly. Um, That's if he wants to go. I mean, <laughs> if you, I think you're silly, personally. But I mean, <laughs> he obviously thinks that... Uh, 
he has to move abroad. Mm -hmm. um, and if he does, well, then he's got to show what he's made of. And this is the best stage he could possibly have. Yeah. What about the uh, Valencia team? Uh, Kempes, I know you loved his play in the World Cup. Oh, what yes. about him as a player? Yes, well, I mean, we all drooled over the wonderful goals scored there, and he scored mm -hmm. more than most. And uh, we watched the Argentinians last night at Wembley, and it was a, I spoke to so many people afterwards. I mean, even Bill Shanky was euphoric about the display. And uh, it frightens you to think of Kempes in that lot. But here we can see him tonight and hope that he has some of those tremendous shots of his. Yeah. But the other fellow interests me, Bonhoff, because I used to keep going on about him in the last World Cup, <laughs> that he lock, somebody locked him in a box and he would never come out. Yeah. But I think that uh, at this level, in finals like this, he takes a lot more responsibility, and he's a good player. Yeah. He did have a disappointing World Cup, though, didn't he? As he you did. Pointed out there, he did, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. Trev Bonhoff as a player? Well, I think, as Laurie says, um, we were talking before as to whether they'll restrict him to try and sit around Liam Brady and Graham Ricks, which would be disappointing. We, we like to see him with a freer role, pushing forward, and he's got such a dangerous shot, and he can create chances. And the same with Kempis. I think the problem the Arsenal lads have got to watch out for is him just dropping that little bit deep and turning and running at people like he did for the Argentinians. And on Saturday, in fact, though, the Arsenal, the back four, did sit back uh, with ourselves as well and give us a little bit of space to get the ball and, and start to run at them. And yeah. if you give somebody like Kempis that sort of space, then we could cause problems. So it could be almost a little bit last night, individual sort of man-to-man -man flair from Kempes against perhaps a, the solid teamwork of Arsenal. Yes, and I think, uh, to be fair though, to the Arsenal lads, I mean, Liam Brady, he, he's got a lot of flair. He can go past people. And Graham, as we saw against the Juventus, the when goal there. he hasn't there. got Paul Allen on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we're all looking to see, but really, Jim, if Arsenal... Uh, can or are prepared even to change that set pattern which yeah. we know so well after what 55 or 60 games yeah. this season um, they're possibly trying the same 4-4-2 pattern against foreign opposition and if it doesn't work well I think they've really got to do something a bit different because yeah. on Saturday they didn't appear yeah. to be able to I think tonight yeah. it'll be important the first 20 minutes you know, there, there must be a little bit of apprehension in their minds and if they can mm. just go out first 20 minutes get a grip of the game and be positive then I think it will run through the team and hopefully they'll build from that. Yeah. So uh, you have faith in Arsenal to pull it off yes, tonight? Yes, I'm definitely going to ask. <laughs> I'd love to see him get a result tonight and, and round off what has been a very good season for him. And you I think they deserve something yes, after sir. everything they've done this year. Are they going to win it though? Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll say they would win it. I don't know that much about Valencia, we, I mean, but I think no, Arsenal... I don't think any of us know that much, but we're going to go 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are in form at the moment. So now let's go over and join uh, in Brussels, Bob Wilson and your commentator, John Mott. Thank you, Jimmy, and good evening. Welcome to the Heysel Stadium in Brussels. It's a clear, warm night, and the supporters of both these famous clubs have already begun to make this quite an occasion. You're watching there the flags of the Spanish fans from Valencia, whose colours are normally red and yellow, but who tonight, Valencia, will be wearing all white. The teams are about to make their entrance, and Arsenal have lifted themselves, we feel, from being in the team camp, Bob Wilson and myself, pretty well since Saturday. Several of the players heartened by the news of that England performance last night and by the arrival of the players' wives late this afternoon because the Arsenal contingent here is something in the region of 12 to 15,000. That's how many supporters they've got across to rival these Spanish fans and make this one of the hopefully memorable European nights. But a word quickly from Bob Wilson about the mood in the Arsenal camp. Well, the mood is really a very optimistic mood. They're not sitting back and talking about tiredness, which has already been mentioned in the studio. It is Arsenal's 68th game of the season, which is an enormous lot, but that's all in the mind. Football isn't really a, a game of yesterday's or tomorrow's. It's, a, it's all about today, about what they do tonight. And uh, Don Howe and Terry Neal haven't allowed them any time to be morbid about the, uh, what happened on Saturday, and uh, the reaction is very positive at the moment. News also that Uli Hernes, the general manager of Bayern Munich, will be in the stadium tonight to watch Liam Brady, whose name appears on an Arsenal team sheet, perhaps for one of the last times before his expected departure to the continent. The Arsenal team is the one that finished the cup final with Sammy Nelson at number three and David O'Leary having passed a fitness test on that calf injury. Indeed, away to my right, the Arsenal team making their entrance and Valencia coming from the left. The teams here come from opposite ends of the stadium and number nine in the picture, the famous Mario Kempis, the man who lit up Argentina in the World Cup finals two years ago. He, 
Pat Rice leading out the Arsenal side. Just to give you an idea of the rules tonight, in case this match should end in a draw, let me say right away, it has to be settled tonight. There will be extra time first off, and if it's still level, then the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup will be settled on penalty kicks. A beautiful evening, as I said, and a tremendous atmosphere inside this Heysel Stadium, where West Ham played in the Cup Winners' Cup final. I'm sure Trevor Brooking needs no reminding of that four years ago when they lost to Anderlecht. The Valencia side then, the well-known names, number eight, Bonhoff, and number nine, Kempis. Number seven, Sara, played for Spain against England in Barcelona in March. The right-back, Carete, is a player who's really impressed Don Howe on the occasion he saw Valencia play. And the other man to watch for up front with Kempis will be wearing number 11. That's Pablo, the little fellow with the moustache and the Afro haircut there. And in the picture now, Rainer Bonhoff. The referee and his two linesmen come from Czechoslovakia. It's ten years ago since Arsenal won the old Fairs Cup. Bob Wilson was in the team then, and indeed they played one of the matches of that two-leg final in Brussels. Wojciech Krzysztof from Czechoslovakia, the referee. Sara is the captain of Valencia. He'll be wearing number seven. I'm just waiting for Pat Rice to come forward. And it's 20 years ago, incidentally, in the history of European football. We always mention this match since in 1960, Alfredo Di Stefano, the manager of this Valencia team, played perhaps his most famous match in the European Champions Cup final for Real Madrid against Eintracht Frankfurt at Hampden Park. That famous 7-3 victory back in 1960. And Di Stefano now is Terry Neal's opposite number in this Cup Winners' Cup final here in Brussels. Traditional exchange of pennants as the captains toss on this beautiful pitch. It really is very well grassed, the Heysel Stadium, not used very often, only for most important matches. No club side plays here regularly, and the conditions look set for a fine final. Arsenal wearing yellow again as they did on Saturday. Slightly different style shirts, incidentally. A word on the shirts, Bob? Well, uh, it is hot here again in Brussels, although happily there's a, more of a breeze than there was at Wembley, where I believe the temperature was measured at around 80. But these shirts are specially designed and have a, a sweat-absorbent interior, in fact, to them. So uh, they're hoping it'll help anyway. They had one scare earlier today when UFA at first decided this morning that yellow and white would not mix and that Arsenal would have to wear their traditional red and I gather a set of red shirts was hastily dispatched from Highbury on the plane carrying the players wives to Brussels but finally UFA relented and permitted Arsenal to play in yellow shirts and blue shorts Valencia have worn an all-white strip in most of their European matches this season you saw a glimpse of their form against Glasgow Rangers earlier in the competition but bear in mind as well, they've also won in Barcelona and defeated Barcelona, the holders of the Cup Winners' Cup, by beating them in both matches. Valencia won 1-0 in Barcelona and 4-3 on their own ground. And their supporters here tonight, who have been making tremendous noises before the kickoff with their firecrackers and their bells and their drums as well, they're also going to lend a tremendous amount of colour to this occasion. As Bob was saying, it's Arsenal's 68th match of the season. Valencia has played nothing like that many. And Arsenal's 27th cup tie. And as Frank Stapleton may well reflect, of those 68 matches, Arsenal have lost, or the previous 67 anyway, Arsenal have lost just 10. And now the supreme test as to whether they will finish the season with a major trophy. After the disappointment of Saturday, Pat Jennings prepares for the European Cup Winners' Cup final on a ground where even he, in his long and illustrious career, has never played before. Alan Sunderland waiting in the centre circle because Arsenal will be playing in the first half from right to left.
And away we go for the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup 1980. And here's Liam Brady on the ball for Arsenal. And the first foul is by Kempis. Arsenal have pushed Willie Young forward. Sunderland. Here's Sammy Nelson. Graham Ricks, nice ball. Sunderland. Bonoff for Valencia. Foul there as he ran, but the referee wave play on. Pat Rice wearing the captain's armband. Challenged there by Pablo. Finds David O'Leary. Arsenal may have taken a calculated gamble on O'Leary's fitness. Young. Stapleton makes the run away by Arias, the big number four. Kempis and Pablo will be the two players pushed furthest forward by the Spaniards, wearing nine and eleven respectively. The others come from midfield, rather like the Arsenal formation. Here's Nelson. Stapleton pulling wide. Measured start by Arsenal. Talbot to Nelson. Here comes Young. Sunderland. Away by Arias. Kempis is chasing. Needs no introduction to anybody that watched the uh, World Cup finals. He's also the top scorer in this competition with nine goals in previous rounds, Mario Kempis. Subirat's just leaving the throw for Botubot, the left back. This is Arias. That's Botubot. Right-footed player, although he plays on the left. Looks for Pablo. Valencia have scored more goals than Arsenal on the way to this final, but they've also conceded rather more. That's Kempis. Lovely skill with his left foot. Tried to find Saura, and Graham Ricks was back covering. Saura in turn challenging him. That's Karate following up. And Karate left his foot there a little bit. You can see the reaction of Sammy Nelson. Now, Karate was first in with the foot there, and I think the referee may feel he's overreacting to the alleged retaliation because these Spaniards are regarded, as Don Howe was saying before the match, as very good actors. Anyway, Karate's down on the floor, and the referee wants the throw-in taken by Bonoff. Solsona. Free kick given against Brady. So Valencia temporarily have got 10 players on the field. Bonoff to take the kick. In the way was Ricks. Brady. Ricks. Looking for Sunderland and Stapleton. The man cutting it out was Arias. Brian Talbot. Rice trying to get forward. That was Botubot. Rice again. Talbot. Young. Stapleton over on the right. Man going across to take the throw there is Subarat, the number 10. Plays midfield. Arias looks for Kempis offside there. Free kick to Arsenal. Just a quick word on the way it started, Bob. Well, uh, once again, Arsenal have started quite well. There's quite good uh, possession from them. The only danger is, as we know, that Valencia is a side who often absorb pressure and then suddenly turn it on for spells. Mistake by Willie Young was picked up there in the middle of the field by Solsona, whose pass hit Young, who then cleared it. Karate, the number two, that's Kempis in your picture, but Karate, the number two, appears to be all right after appearing mortally wounded for a few seconds. That's Solsona on to Bonoff. 
Linesman flags for a free kick in Bonhoff's favour. Driven low, bit of a deflection there, and Pat Rice got the ball away from Pablo at the last. First shot coming in from Solsona. Well, Pat Jennings is having no difficulty at all with that. The Spaniards are recruited to have one or two players apart from Bonoff who can drive them from long distances. Arias goes up with Sunderland. That was Bocubot. This is Nelson. Brady. On the right, Pat Rice. Sarah trying to get back to cover him. And in the way also there was Subirats. Solsona quick neat player in the number six shirt looking for Reiner Bonoff <laughs> Bot you bot was a tackle by Sunderland Bonoff tends to take the throw-ins and the free kicks oh he's found Kempis Good save by Pat Jennings. And Arsenal caught out at the throw-in. And Kemp has given the kind of space from which he scored so many goals. And denied then only by the Arsenal goalkeeper. The first clear chance of the match falling to Valencia. Sarah has gone across to take the corner. away by Nelson so the Bonoff Kempis combination already making itself felt Kempis picked out from the throw in and not terribly well marked Pablo tackled by Rice Here's Brady, moving across to the right. Stapleton. Oh, that's well played by Stapleton, and a pity that uh, Brady couldn't have controlled it. Here's Solsona. Karete, the man who went down early on. Arias, Botubot on the far side, Kempis, Botubot's continued his run, Kempis finds Reiner Bonoff, Solsona, and finally Brady, surviving the untidy tackle from behind, Arsenal have got three men pushed well forward apart from Nelson, there's Brady again. On the far post is Stapleton. Finds O'Leary. Was Price shoved? Apparently not. Ball was too high, really. And this is Bonoff to Solsona. Interesting how many touches Bonoff has had already. Arias taking the chance to get forward. Looks for Pablo. They'll try and use his pace if they can. And the Arsenal fans making themselves heard in Brussels. The big drummer, though, is from Spain. There's no doubt about that. Here's Corbett. Sara. Carete. 
Bosch Bot on the far side. Karete. Rick's getting a tackle in. And again, referee had a word with Rick's off the ball as uh, was played away. Pablo dropping a little bit deeper, looking for Kempis. O'Leary across. Rice. Kempis getting in quickly, and a free kick given to Arsenal. The Czech referee seems determined to make a firm start, but he wasn't kidded by that piece of acting early on by Karate. That's promising for Arsenal. This is Brady. Stapleton. Oh, Bob, what about the save from Pat Jennings there from Kempis? Well, it saves that we've come to expect from Pat, but what concerned me more was uh, David O'Leary's bum marking of Kempes from the throw-in by Bonner. I saw David objecting immediately afterwards. I'm not quite sure why, and it's, uh, it's not a very professional thing anyway to be objecting at the time that such things are happening, but uh, we've come to expect it from the big man. So, Valencia on the ball as David Price makes the challenge, and that's a foul. Arsenal substitutes are Paul Barron, John Devine, Steve Walford, John Hollins and Paul Vassen, the man whose goal you saw earlier in Turin, which put Arsenal into this final. Bonoff well forward and Brady. Willie Young getting up. Karate. Bonoff's made a run down the right now. He's offside. Nice ball by Brady to Ricks. Trying to get it inside to Alan Sunderland. Arsenal throw. Young has gone forward. Tempest has come back to mark him. And the goalkeeper coming for it, Carlos Pereira, 29 years old. There's Pablo. What you got? Tendilio. Solsona. Subirats moving across to the right. Number 10. Trying to get Karate inside Ricks, whose interception was good. Tidy pass two to Sunderland. Flag was uh, raised. Valencia, often in the shadow of their more illustrious Spanish counterparts, Real Madrid and Barcelona, but they do have a good record of league and cup wins in Spain. Spot you bot. Now Arias. Arsenal appeal for offside. Given. By the Czech linesman. And again, Brady deep, deep to start operations. Willie Young. Sunderland coming off his man and getting some room as well. Talbot. Stapleton. Talbot for the return. David Price. Shot struck Bonoff. Price again. There's a way by Subirats. Price. Arias urging the others forward, especially Kempis. Just about 15 minutes gone in the European Cup Winners' Cup final and no score. The best chance falling to Kempis and a fine save by Jennings after six minutes.
Ace Carete, the right back. Pablo coming across. So too is Pat Rice doing a marking job on the number 11. Bonoff's long throw. Kempes. Bonoff. Solsona coming in. Subirats is the player with Price. That's a goal kick. Well, it's quite open, really, at the moment, the game. I think that uh, what Arsenal have to be aware of is the fact that uh, somebody like Kempes, who goes out of games for such long periods, suddenly flashes into it. And when he does come into it, he uh, possesses so much skill. Bonoff also, of course. David O'Leary for Arsenal. Strains of the Arsenal song from the territories of the Heysel Stadium. Pablo though for Valencia. Foul by Rice as the ball went. Solsona. Still Solsona looks for Kempis. And Nelson for Arsenal. Foul by Botubot on Sunderland. Torbert. Brady takes over again. Sunderland. Stapleton. And Bonoff almost casually stepping in. Man who can play the game apparently at his own pace. The ball was out of play there. Ricks. Nelson. This is Saura coming back. Neat player again on the ball is Saura looking for Carreto. That was a bit ambitious. Talbot. Oh, and Sunderland's offside. Sunderland is spoken to about descent. But the flag was up when Talbot released the ball. Arsenal with two league matches left to play after this Cup Winners' Cup final. And Valencia in Spain in the same position. They too could still qualify for the UEFA Cup through their league position. But the... Real honours lie in tonight's game. O'Leary underneath it. Nelson. Sunderland. Karate with Brady. Brady finding Brian Talbot. Pat Rice has gone up on the right wing. This is Willie Young. And a shot from Young. Well, it's quite interesting. Arsenal are getting quite a few uh, men forward. I mean, that was a good example there from Willie Young. But I do know one of the things that Don Howe hopes that they might do tonight that they didn't manage to do against West Ham, or West Ham didn't allow them to do, was to get men to the goal line, get the ball behind the defence and to turn the defence. And that's one thing he's definitely looking for tonight. O'Leary's staying very close to Kempis, that's for sure. Now that uh, he's already seen him come through once, this is Willie Young. Nelson. That was won by Saura. Kempis in the middle, so is Pablo and Subirats. Subirats coming in and the ball deflecting off O'Leary. Good break by Valencia. Tendilio is at the back, and he was beaten by Talbot. An Arsenal break with Graham Ricks. 
Arsenal, such specialists in the counter-attack, will be hoping to move out quickly and smoothly like that. Here's Brady. O'Leary and Nelson. Sunderland again coming off sharply. That's uh, O'Leary, though, overhead. This uh, Spanish team are quite experienced. They've got a 19-year-old at centre-half, Tendilio, but the average age of the side, about 26. Valencia's 14th year in European competition. That was young. Price. Free kick to Arsenal. So, 21 minutes gone. Arsenal nil, Valencia nil. London voices echoing around the stadium as Willie Young comes forward. Stapleton. Talbot trying to find a way through with Stapleton. Sunderland. Talbot following up, almost did find it, still free, appeals for handball, and a free kick given anyway. Arias, the big centre-back, been attracting the attention of Real Madrid, I gather. Bonoff is pushed well forward again here. Sudaraz, Sara, and Torbert seen now in defence. Oh, he nearly let Pablo, and it'll be a goal kick. Well, he is a quick little fellow, this number 11. If anybody's confused by any names they've seen in the papers, his full name is Pablo Rodriguez, but he's known as Pablo to the fans and indeed to the Spanish press. <laughs> Header by Price looking for Sunderland. Got you by the cross. Willie Young has gone forward now into the Valencia penalty area. This is Liam Brady. In the way, Kempis. Oh, Brady took it back. Three in the centre for the cross. Bot you bot in the way. Brady again. Ricks. Carete is the defender. And Carete pushes Ricks. And that's twice Carete, the number two, has been involved in incidents. Arias is remonstrating with Ricks as well. And the referee has told Carete to take a throw in and get on with the game. Tendilio. Solsona. That's Pablo on the run. Foul. Spaniards are getting their marking sorted out while you're watching Nelson take the kick. There's a man on Sunderland here and one on Stapleton there. But they've beaten them. Sunderland again. Foul by Tendilio, the young centre half. Good position then here for Arsenal. Played back for Ricks to shoot. It hit his own player, Stapleton. Talbot turns it back to Nelson. 
Stapleton well forward. Price is there. It's Torbert! Strikes the defender. It's still free, though. O'Leary. Stapleton's up! Oh, and taken out by the defender. Torete on the line. David Price is injured in an earlier incident. But Stapleton was so close. And you'll see how close from this. Torete, the fullback, saved his goalkeeper. And while that was happening, David Price was on the ground, but he's up again now. Willie Young jumping at the back, away by Arias. Then Boschubot, but Arsenal winning it back well. Ricks. O'Leary still forward. And this time, an Arsenal infringement. Close thing there for Arsenal, though, Bob. Yes, and I think, once again, it's showing that uh, Don's plan is really uh, working in many respects. There are many, many players getting up there. David Price really, in a way, initiated that move by getting into the box. He, he took quite a knock at the time. But, uh, and then it was backed up so quickly by other players. And then the cross finally came in, and uh, a good header from Frank Stapleton. And a header there from Sammy Nelson as Arsenal begin to get into their stride and the fans get behind them. Sunderland on the far side with Bocubot. One close thing then at either end so far with about 27 minutes gone. Nelson's header, but a foul given. Kick to be taken by Karate. Kemp is up. Subarats is in. But no power on the header as David Price jumping with him did enough to restrict the force of the effort good kick by Pat Jennings Tendilio up with Stapleton and a slightly untidy challenge by Sammy Nelson Matt Sara fouled by Ricks referee quickly in to avoid any retaliation and a handshake between the two players concerned Bonhoff is up here. And now Ricks. Arsenal have got uh, players running from all directions here up front. But uh, the man who was quickest to the ball was Bochubot. Here he is now, the number three. Arias. starts up again that's a uh, tackle from behind by Karate on Ricks right in front of the Arsenal bench in fact you've probably got a view there of the uh, Arsenal assistant uh, manager Wilf Dixon clapping his hands it's on by Sunderland Arias Kempis begins his run now Pat Rice the defender So young for Arsenal to braiding. Subarats trying to close him down. O'Leary. Sunderland. Stapleton. Nice turn. Still Stapleton. Tackle was by uh, Arias. Rice comes in. Karate. 
Good supporting play on the right by Pat Rice. And here's the other fullback, Sammy Nelson. Young. Volleyed away by Arias for Valencia. But Arsenal had them pinned back there. Half an hour gone in this European Cup Winners' Cup final in Brussels in the Heysel Stadium. Arsenal nil, Valencia nil. Here's Solsona. Bonhoff. Solsona again. Here's Karate. Solsona. Karate. Solsona and Ricks having a little bit of a dig at each other. This is Solsona again, and Ricks got a foot in. Tendilio. Price tries to cut them down. Solsona. Pablo. Pablo looking for Kempes. Nelson's there. Plenty of cover on in the Arsenal defence. Here's Brady. Stapleton comes across. Marked by Tendilio. Atomium in the background there, the monument built for the World Trade Fair in 1958 to symbolise the splitting of the atom, one of the most famous sites in Brussels. And the stadium right in the shadow of the Atomium here. Stapleton, Ricks. Wright has made a run up the right. This is Brian Talbot. Sunderland. Nelson. Well, I think Arsenal are working very hard at this moment and uh, perhaps have an edge, but I do hope they don't fall into a, or, or get lulled into a false sense of security. Last night, uh, John and I watched the game, the semi-final game, the whole of the video in which uh, Nantes, uh, or rather uh, Valencia played Nantes and beat them in the second leg. And there were many patches in that game when Nantes were well on top. And then suddenly out of what seemed deep defence, they were suddenly swinging right back into violent attack. Nobody more so than Kempis, who got two goals in that game. Sora challenging for the ball with uh, David Price. Rice finds Stapleton. Tendilio has gone across. Little back heel to Rice. Here's Talbot. Ricks on this side, so is Nelson. Bot making the most of it, which is predictable. But the referee calling Alan Sunderland across, and the first yellow card of the final goes to the Arsenal number eight. For the trip on the number three, Botchubot. Well, the trainers always seem to hunt in pairs when it uh, comes to continental clubs, but as you can see there, Sunderland clearly took the legs when the ball had gone. I don't think you could fault the referee for that decision. So the trainers are back on their bench, and it's a free kick to Valencia with 34 minutes gone and no score. Kempes. Here comes Pablo. Kempes. Saura. Solsona on the far side, but no danger to Pat Jennings. Tendilio, Arias. Balls out, Arsenal throw. Sunderland. See, the Arsenal players, 
the score nil-nil after 35 minutes. The Arsenal players watching that uh, recording last night, noticeable how much uh, interest Liam Brady and Graham Ricks were taking in that match because those players in particular have got a real interest in the overseas game and in continental football. Indeed, Brady's future may lie there very shortly, as we know. For the moment, it's Talbot for Arsenal to Brady. Here's Price. It's nicely done by Arsenal. And Pat Rice in the attack now. Stapleton on the end of this. And Karate. Karate thought it was his throw, but it's been given to Arsenal. To be taken by Nelson. Willie Young with the goalkeeper. Subirats down for Solsona. Brian Torbert checked him. Free kick to Valencia. Bonoff. Solsona. Nicely done. Still Solsona. Little deflection on the shot. Corner to Valencia. <laughs> Pablo up with Pat Jennings, but only one winner there. Pat Jennings won a UFA Cup medal in his days with Spurs and also a runners-up medal in that same competition. But here in the Cup Winners' Cup final, no goals yet. 37 minutes gone in the first half here in Brussels. Karate with the throw for Valencia. Solsona. Bot you bot. Young's header, then Nelson's, now Ricks. Again, good combination by Arsenal. That's Sunderland. This is a really good move. Brady joins the attack and looks for Stapleton. Pat Rice is coming forward. And away by Arias to Solsona. Arias joins the attack now. Bonoff. Pablo is in there and he just tried to work a little dummy and get Kempis in but Willie Young very sound for Arsenal that's Bonoff on the far side with Brian Talbot Bonoff looking for the free kick but not getting it He's a man with a lot on his mind at the moment, Bonoff. He too could be on the move at the end of this season. Like Brady, who finds Nelson. Sunderland. Ball coming off Ricks. Then off Sara. Back again to Brady. O'Leary. Young. Tendilio's header, now Sara. Carete. Carete is now making a bit of a production of his latest injuries. Out your picture, there he is, number two. He was hobbling again a bit there. Here's Solsona. with Willie Young is Sara just coming up to the 40 minute mark five minutes left in the first half 
Arsenal nil, Valencia nil in the final of the Cup Winners' Cup. Brady for Arsenal. Sunderland. Ricks. Again, plenty of Arsenal players forward. Brady. Still Brady. Then O'Leary. Oh, it's a break on to Valencia. It's Ari Aston, number four. Tempest wants it played left. Which was to Sauer, in fact, who looked to have the best break on goal, but couldn't take advantage of the space. Case there where Arsenal could so easily have been outnumbered. Here's the man that made the break, Arias, but a free kick given. Bob Wilson making the point earlier that when Arsenal do push their back four into attack, Valencia very capable of breaking as they did there. For the moment, though, it's Rice with the kick for Arsenal. Sunderland and Botubot. Sunderland, Stapleton, Arias is header, Rice, oh Pablo uh, beaten there by Brady, and Bonoff goes across to take the throw and tries to get Kempis down the left wing, O'Leary was there, now Rice for Arsenal to Torbett. Well, Arsenal have not hesitated to push these defenders forward. They've got uh, Nelson forward much of the time, and Pat Rice. Here's Nelson. Sunderland to Talbot. Ricks. Pills for handball, but it's Arsenal's advantage anyway. Nelson. Willie Young with the header. Then Ricks. Stapleton tries to get in with Tendilio, corner to Arsenal, really resulting out of a very poor punch by the goalkeeper. Didn't seem terribly confident on the cross. Two and a half minutes left in the first half, corner to Arsenal. But this time he is confident and takes it well. Solsona. Combining with Subirat, then looking for Bonoff. Bonoff challenged by Brady, then by Talbot. Shakes them both off. Bonoff's cross. Rice came across there to do a good covering job for Arsenal. It's a good run by Bonoff. Brady. Talbot. There was an air of calmness there about the Arsenal defence, even though Bonoff had taken two of their players out of the game. That's Young. Solsona. Kemp is just dropping deep for a moment. Solsona. That was Tendilio looking for Karate. Bonos down the right again, but that's a very poor ball from the fullback. So Liam Brady starts things off again, just in front of the Arsenal back four. And he finds Stapleton. Corner of Tendilio. Less than a minute to go of normal time in the first half, Arsenal's corner. Here comes Willie Young. Well, unorthodox, but quite effective from Pereira. Back by Rice, then Young, now Brady. Ricks. Whistle's gone. 
and the linesman has come onto the pitch thinking that it's half time I'm not too sure that the referee had blown for half time but the players coming off anyway with no score after 45 minutes of this European Cup Winners Cup final and a half time comment from Bob Wilson well, I'm sure that uh, even through my Arsenal coloured eyes, everyone will agree that uh, they have played very, very well in this first 45 minutes. They've had the edge, I think, and although the real chances have been one all, that is the one that Jennings saved from Kempes and the one that uh, Carete knocked off the line from Frank Stapleton, Arsenal are getting men to the uh, goal line. They are pulling the ball back well, and they're looking the most dangerous side. Uh, uh, as regards... The opposition, I think the, the man who's uh, really the biggest threat of all is not Kempes or Bonoff, but Solsona number six, a real workhorse. That's the position then in the Heysel Stadium at half-time in the European Cup Winners' Cup final. There's no score, and we rejoin Jimmy Hill in London. Well, I must say that uh, we didn't look at it quite like Bob, did we, at the moment? Uh, but to go on, Laurie, well, what do you think? He's a than we are, but... Yes, uh, true. Certainly, I don't think it's going to be high-scoring games, Jim. No. Uh, <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> yeah, as I said at the beginning of the game, I was looking to see whether Arsenal could change it, and I think they need to do something. Um, I must admit, whenever Brady gets forward, and he's looking a little bit lively, mm. you know, he often mm. in the league uh, on a Saturday tends to plant himself on that little patch just inside of the touchline mm. of, of Rixey, and he, he looks as though he's, he's wanting to get around and buzz around a bit. But he, he frustrates me at times when he comes too deep and gets it off the back four. Mm. Um, if I was playing against him, I'd love to see him back there. But when he picks it up and comes at you, uh, that's yeah. when he looks at his most dangerous. It could well be that they're giving him a freer role and uh, Graham Ricks is lying deep, isn't he? He's getting, yeah. uh, like, like John Robertson does a little bit for Nuts Forest. I think the idea is to collect balls and knock them into the space behind the fullbacks. But you see, uh, Valencia have always got three men back there marking two. And their sweepers are well versed in this covering role. Yeah. Whereas in England, you often get a fella to do that against Arsenal, who isn't used to doing it. You know, yeah. to just mark the space while the other two defenders take stable and sun and man for man. Whereas across there, they do it naturally. Yeah. Would you be happy though as Arsenal's manager at the moment? Well, not really, because uh, he's got to win the cup. Mm. Um, you know, when you're in two cup finals, it must be tragic if you come out of them and don't win one of them. But certainly, he, as, uh, as John pointed out once there, they can't afford to gallop away because there was once when it was a good little move, actually, and yeah. Brady got on the edge of the box and lost possession, and bang, there was four of them coming right. at uh, Arsenal. Well, there's been about one real chance each, hasn't there, Trev? Yes, well, the early one that Kempers had from yeah. the throw-in, and then, of course, the, when it had a flurry in their penalty box. You can have a look at that Kempers chance now yes, from fine. the uh, long throw. I think the long I hope we, there it is. It kept caught everyone on the hop really the long throw including us and David O'Leary just caught the wrong side it just popped up nicely and and Pat pushed it comfortably round really it was probably I would have thought Kempis uh, he got it on target but probably the far post was was the place to hit it but uh, really as we said neither side has created a lot of chances I think Arsenal have had a certain amount of build up but uh, it's mainly in the two thirds of the field that don't really matter yeah. and uh, what we'd like to see is is pushing I still like to see more men push forward I think Sammy Nelson and Pat Rice possibly uh, Bob said that was the tactics Don wanted to use and I think they've got to go all the way and get to the byline and make the extra man mm. with Graham Ricks and Liam Brady playing as deep as they do it means that when the ball goes into Alan Sunderland and Frank Stapleton there's not the numbers there to cause the Spanish defence problems and I think on the one or two occasions that we've got three or four men forward uh, the Spanish defence has been a little bit suspect um, mm. for instance when Frank got the header that was cleared off the line yeah. We can have a look at that now, Laurie. That mm. was a, a near miss there. The best right. chance that Arsenal had. Well, the yeah, there was a nice little flurry. I think it starts with a uh, good old up and under here. Mm -hmm. Look, and I was wanting him to knock that ball here. He knocked it the other side. That was a good shot charged down. And uh, they were wanting something off this because look at the number of yellow shirts up there now. And that was a good strong header. And I, I'm not sure the goalkeeper would have got that. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a little <coughs> bit of panic that Trevor's on about because we had enough bodies in there. And we keep saying we because I think, you know, it's, we're treating it like England versus Spain tonight, which is not a bad thing. And uh, <laughs> there you are, he gets up there, that little fella, and uh, he does well. Yeah, the hard little defenders, you know, they get a foot in, but uh, like you, I think when they're on crosses, they're relying on the goalkeeper an awful lot, which is unusual, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he, he's coming all the way, and he's took a couple right past the penalty spot. Good goalkeeper, uh, sound goalkeeper. Both of it. them, in fact, that, yeah. Yeah, when, they, but when often, they're in. <laughs> often they do silly things that lot as well, don't they, when they're like that? You know? Yeah. But uh, I think the final pass has led both sides down, really. If they can just steady down with the final pass, yeah. especially into the box. 
we may see uh, a few more goal chances. That was yeah. probably the only real, really good cross that the Arsenal lads have put in and swung it away from the keeper. Yeah. They've had three or four other crosses that have just hung in the air. And the keeper, I mean, he doesn't mind coming all the way, does he, really? And he's yeah. come and plucked them out of the air. And so there's never really been any danger. I think the whipped cross is the one that could catch them out. That's yeah. true. Well, <coughs> we're talking a little bit of theory here, but to the sort of people who are not uh, football addicts, shall we say, after the heady excitement of last night, um, that has not been a very good half, has it, for entertainment, whether it's uh, tactically so mm. or any other way. Did right. you, have you enjoyed it that much? No, not really. I haven't. And uh, I hesitate to say things like that in case people say, oh, it's all right for him. I mean, he's not in the final. But, uh, you know, good luck to Arsenal. They've worked away then. We all want them to win. Mm. But um, it's not a very entertaining game at the minute because mm. people at home want goals. Mm. And uh, the lads out there are trying their very best. But, you see, if you've got a predictable system and a predictable pattern, and the yeah, goal scorers aren't getting the, enough of the ball or they're not getting it early enough up where mm -hmm. it matters, well then, you know, you're stuck. And I, I think that Arsenal started being stuck on Saturday at Wembley and they don't look as though they're going to become unstuck yet. So mm -hmm. the only thing they can do is change the pattern a bit. Yeah, yeah. Agreed? Yeah, that you really need somebody possibly just to run at the defence. So at the moment, they're getting the ball, clipping it in. And like Maradona and or Brooking. Uh, well <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. somebody, I mean, such as I mean Maradona, who, who just runs it and commits defenders at the moment, yeah. being clipped in, yes. and they're waiting for something to happen. But and don't it's not you gonna think happen. Graham Ricks could do that if he was further forward? That's right. I think the goal, yeah. for instance, he got in Juventus when he played a 1-2 and, yes. and ran past the defender, clipped in. That's the sort of runs that I mean, like possibly the back four need to push up a bit, you know, get the, the defenders up and say to the the people in front of them, look, we look after this end. Yeah. You know, we are confident <coughs> enough. They're all internationals anyway. And they've got a hell of a good goalkeeper at the back of them. Yeah. You, look, we'll get it up there. Now, you, you push off away from us and start playing football up there yeah. and see what happens. Well, uh, maybe hmm? it, it's a good thing they can't be here, but at least we've told them exactly what they should do <laughs> in the second half and sit here praying that they well, all do it. Well, I think we're just anxious, but we want to be the don't we? Meantime, <laughs> let Harry have a word. <laughs> Well, the half-time interval is still going on in Brussels, so just before we return there, let's concentrate for a few moments on another crucial sporting issue. The next 10 days are absolutely critical for the future of the Olympic movement. On May the 24th, every country's National Olympic Committee must make up its mind whether or not it will compete in this summer's Moscow Olympics. That is the deadline for entry. Britain, of course, has already said we shall go, despite government disapproval. Yesterday, the French National Olympic Committee decided that it too would compete. Its chairman, Claude Collard, said it was the government's job to take political decisions. Our task, he said, is to take sporting decisions. Monsieur Collard also said we couldn't leave the athletes in doubt any longer. Their morale was a major factor in our decision. Well, tomorrow in Dusseldorf, West Germany, who traditionally send a huge and highly talented team to the Olympic Games, will make their decision. And it's a decision which is bound to affect the way other nations vote on May the 24th. The West German government has already indicated it's in favour of a boycott. Will its National Olympic Committee agree? John Rodder, sports correspondent of The Guardian, is closer to the working... I think, uh, you know, march on to Moscow is, is, the, is, is the name of the message. And I think here in West Germany, they, that's what they really want to do. I think, too, that they would have liked a little more uh, support from the president, Lord Kalanin. They felt he's kept too much of a low profile in all this. Um, when. Um, perhaps if I could go back a few years, I'm quite sure, for instance, that if Avery Brundage was alive and president of the IOC, he would be in Dusseldorf tomorrow morning. John, thanks very much indeed. John Rodder in Munich in another week of crisis for the Olympic movement. Now let's go back to Jimmy Hill. Well, thank you, Harry, and uh, we shall go back now and join Bob Wilson and John Motson with the message, I think, from uh, Laurie and Trevor here that we haven't lost faith in Arsenal by any means. We still think they're going to do it but we'd like to see just a little more action, Bob. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jimmy. John Watson here at the beginning of the second half with Valencia about to kick off. No substitutions. Valencia in all white, playing now from right to left. And Arsenal gave their supporters a wave as they came out for the second half. And the terrace away to our right was suddenly a mass of red and yellow flags. The referee, Christoph from Czechoslovakia, just checking his watch and Valencia get the second half underway. The ball with Karate. That was Sammy Nelson's header to Brady, and now it's Ricks. Stapleton. And Ricks again. Header away by Arias. Brady. 
This is Stapleton. The defender is Tendilio, the teenager. Solsona now for Valencia. Pablo Kempis against O'Leary. Good play by O'Leary. It's a supreme test for him, this, marking Kempis. A match in which he dearly would love to do well, and he's doing so under the handicap still of that lingering injury. This is Brady. That's a nice play by Arsenal. Talbot getting forward again. Sunderland. Stapleton and Price in the centre. Reiner Bonoff getting a foot in there. That was a telling tackle too. But that was a good piece of chasing back as well. And typical really of Brian Talbot that he should be so energetic in what for him as well as Arsenal is the 68th match of the season. He's played in every one the number four. The only Arsenal player who has. Here's Brady. There's Ritz. It's Price over on the far side. But the ball is out. And a chance for Bob Wilson to make his first comment of the second half. Well, the first comment really takes up the points made at half-time that uh, one thing perhaps the television screens don't show is the amount of players Arsenal did push forward in that last 30 minutes of the first half. Uh, most of the time, when they were going forward, there was either one central defender and one full-back only. The rest of the players were in the Valencia half, and that's the way it started now. Bit of a tumble on the far side, and uh, Graham Ricks, the man that went away hobbling slightly, He's been uh, having one or two tussles with the man holding the ball there, Karate, the right back. Both teams, incidentally, according to normal European rules, can use any two of their five substitutes at any time during the game. Reiner Bonhoff to take the free kick for Valencia. Safe enough. John Howe pointing from the Arsenal bench. Terry Neal thoughtful next to him. The Arsenal subs nearer to us and Roger Thompson, the reserve team coach, nearest the camera. Pat Rice. David O'Leary. Well worth making the point that a British team has been in one of the three European club finals every year since 1965. It's 16 years since Britain didn't have a side in the final of one of the three club tournaments in Europe. It's a tremendous record, and one that Nottingham Forest and Arsenal have furthered this year. Here's Subirat for Valencia. Rice. Arias. That's a fair ball too, but Botubot stretching couldn't quite make it. Alfredo Di Stefano, one of the legendary figures of European football, but now feeling the tension as much as any other man in his profession. Played some great matches out there on the field. All he can do tonight is sit and watch. Willie Young for Arsenal. Nelson to Brady. There's Sunderland. Sammy Nelson is well forward in the centre if Arsenal can get the ball in, but the whistle's already gone. Just a reminder that if the score should remain at nil-nil until the 90 minutes are up, we have half an hour's extra time, and then the possibility of penalties, which neither side would really want. And here's right. Tendilio across. Brady. David Price coming in at the far post. Often gets in on those headers, David Price, when the two front men are more closely marked. But the most anxious moment for the big goalkeeper so far was when his fullback cleared off the line from Stapleton. And we've yet to see just how good he is, the goalkeeper, when he's truly tested. Solsona for Valencia. Pablo. Bonos made a run forward here. Pablo on the ball, though. 
Still Pablo, that's gone off. Beautifully done. Solsona. Still Solsona. The shot hit Willie Young. And Solsona following up. Lost out to David Price. Now Sunderland. It was a fine ball just earlier there by Bonhoff. This is Rix though. What a tangle. And Sammy Nelson took the feet of Karate away. And again this referee... Solsona's there. South making a run. Checking him. Well, Valencia pushing forward there in uh, themselves in numbers and uh, very nearly a chance for Kempes on that left foot. That was Bonoff who has really been quite disappointing, suddenly setting up that chance or uh, nearly a chance for the Argentinian. Here's Sunderland for Arsenal. Now it's Rice. Brady for Arsenal. Oh, it's beautifully done by Liam Brady. Trying to play the little one-two. Brian Talbot involved again. Referee in the way. Willie Young. Stapleton. Karete. Fullback takes his chance to come forward. Hounded by Graham Ricks. Who was eventually penalised. Karete to Bonhoff. Now Subarats takes over. Solsona. Bonoff. Overran it slightly, it came off Talbot. Bonoff got a bit of a kick, I think, after he let the ball go. This is Willie Young, and now Brady. Di Stefano watching anxiously from the bench. Still no score in this Cup Winners' Cup final. Eight minutes into the second half here in Brussels. And he's shouting out the instructions there, the famous Argentinian as he was by birth, Di Stefano. This is Rix. Sunderland's on the run. Tendilio with the clearance. Carete. Oh, the fullback made a good run there. Went through beautifully. Kempis is in the middle and so is Sarah. This is still correct. And Willie Young to step it away. Now Gareth Kempster to get a free kick in the process. He's now Rice. Pablo getting back. Bocubot playing it with Pablo, then Solsona, then Tendilio, then Bocubot. That was Rice. Young. Brady. Little check there by Saura, but Brady survives. And again, he finds Sunderland. Now Stapleton is in the centre. Oh, just play. The idea was to be right for us. And Carete makes the mistake. Just signs there that the Valencia defence were losing their concentration to semi open for Arsenal. And the goalkeeper makes his feelings felt for the defenders. Sunderland on. Sorry, by the way, if your uh, commentary 
sound is not coming through too clearly back at home. I understand there may have been one or two technical problems, but uh, we're doing our best to sort those out. But certainly no score. Ten minutes to the second half. And anyway, I should imagine the pictures tell the story. That's Solsona to Karete. Subirat. Price getting back with him. Free kick against David Price for the challenge on Subirat. Bonoff, who tends to have the biggest say when it comes to what Valencia do with the set pieces. Five Valencia players waiting in a long line here as Bonoff steps back some 30 yards from goal. And drives one, got a deflection and Saura is the man who retrieved it. It hits Olsona. Saura's cross away by Brady. That's Olsona, who the free kick actually struck. Sunderland gets the ball away as far as Arias, and that's offside. Bob Wilson. Well, it's a little bit ominous for Arsenal at the moment. There's far more method about Valencia in the last uh, five, ten minutes. And uh, they're keeping the same men up the front, whereas in the first half they only had Kempers there. Pablo's there up the front and Saura virtually all the time now. Rice for Arsenal. Stapleton. Talbot's come through. And he goes for the near post, Brian Talbot, with a little chip, which was just off target. Frank Stapleton feeding the ball in there. And Talbot trying to get accuracy on that chip. But the goalkeeper, Pereira, would have had that covered anyway, I feel. Arsenal fans again beginning to get behind their side. So disappointed on Saturday, but so many of them have spent a fortune comparatively this season following the club. And here they are again tonight, some 13 or 14,000 of them in Brussels to watch this Cup Winners' Cup final. Tendilio, Rice, that's Sunderland, Botubot was the first defender, Arias was the second, Arsenal beginning to make a little bit of headway on this right hand side in the last two attacks. As you can see it's an expansive stadium this, very nicely designed just in front of the team benches there. A throw into Arsenal taken by Rice. Tempest back in his own half. And he gets the free kick. Di Stefano again, barking out his instructions. But with 14 minutes gone in the second half here in Brussels, there's still no score in the Cup Winners' Cup Final of 1980. Price for Arsenal. Ricks. Stapleton started a run and he got a yard on his defender there. Tendilio it is trying to tangle with him and succeeding. Carete. Pablo. Carete. Solsona. with a good piece of chasing back by David Price. Here's Brady. Oh, Nelson giving it away to Saura. Carete. Bonoff is up. And it was uh, Ricks who got back, and that was a superb intervention by Ricks. And a lovely break by him too. Played it early, just a little too hurriedly perhaps at the end. One of the best pieces of individual skill we've seen initially there by Rixey. Won the ball and then here he is again doing the same. He's found Stapleton this time. Can he find Price? He can. Price shoots. Well, I think Arsenal deserved the shot on goal there after the work Ricks had done. And David Price volleyed it with his right foot. 
and as Pereira went across his line, the ball dropping the wrong side of the post for Arsenal. That came in the 16th minute of the second half. Sara. Torbert. There's Young. And now Rice. Rice looks for Stapleton. And Arsenal enjoying the last five minutes of possession and pressure and hoping they can turn it into a goal. They've got everybody forward now, bar Sammy Nelson. All nine outfield players, including O'Leary, have pushed up apart from him. Sunderland, Rice. That's Willie Young. But he couldn't get any real power or direction on the header. And Don Howe is obviously not pleased with the way that attack finished. As he takes his seat again. The ball is over on the far side with Pablo. It was uh, Sara that got checked. Referee having a strong word, but not actually taking out the card there to Sammy Nelson. Free kick to Valencia then. Kemp is backing into them a little bit. It was Willie Young's header. Stapleton the target. Karete chopping a little bit at Stapleton's ankles. Brady for Arsenal. Ricks. Sunderland, Botchubot with him. Sunderland asking for a free kick, but nothing doing with the referee. Hey. Terry Neal now distracted by something behind him. I think it was a cameraman actually trying to get a closer view of the bench that's upset them there. This is Ariaspo. Kempis, oof, against O'Leary, and he turned it in only to Nelson. It looked threatening for a moment, as it always does when Kempis gets the ball in a one against one. But O'Leary held him up long enough to make the final ball innocuous. This is Torbett. Ricks. Haven't seen much of Kempis, but as Don Howe was saying last night to us, you don't often see very much of him for long periods in the game, but around the box he can be lethal. Carete for Valencia. Solsona. Bonoff breaking forward. Sara. Pablo. Kempis. Pablo. Bonoff. Good run from the back. Oh, and headed out by David O'Leary quite superbly. Magnificent header out by O'Leary. A relief for Arsenal that. Brady tries to push Stapleton away. Sunderland. Sunderland's cross. And again, Don Howe trying to get the message across as Kempis gets the ball for a Valencia side who now seem to have their tails up again. There was a period of Arsenal pressure and now Valencia getting back on top. This is Sara. Little Pablo. Arias coming forward. Solsona. Bonoff's made the run, he's offside. Been a long season for coaches as well as for players, but Don Howe still finding the 
ambition to motivate and try and put things right. Here's Brady. Brady shot! Oh, he saved it! Carrera turning it round. And Brady there went inside his man, and it was on his left foot as he picked up pace, and Carrera came to his left to make the save. Arsenal hopes were high then with Brady. <laughs> Willie Young was up, but so was Bonoff. Sauer on the break. Brady doing some defending there. This is Nelson. Arsenal still with players forward in abundance. Stapleton jumps. And as he does so, there's some pushing. 21 minutes gone in the second half and still no score in this European Cup Winners' Cup final. With the prospect of extra time growing, of course, as the second half wears on. O'Leary. Pablo. Bonoff was square of him then, but Pablo went the other way to Solsona. Now Subirats. And now Saura. Brady for Arsenal. Again, four players ahead of him. There are five now. That's for Ricks, but it's just overhead, and Arias gets in. Saura. Bonoff, oh, he won't reach that. Neither side yet have used either of their two permitted substitutes, but with the possibility of extra time, there won't be any rush substitutions. Here's Young. Turned on by Price as Stapleton in turn tried to turn Tendilio. And now it's Valencia's turn to break. Pablo. Solsona. Bonoff. Subirats making the break on this side, Tendilio. But Subirats has found Saura. Now Tendilio. And a poor cross too from the centre back who'd come forward. Made life easy for Arsenal and for Jennings. Sunderland. Stapleton. Talbot, Rice, Sunderland, Talbot's in the penalty area again, Sunderland's cross, oh and the goalkeeper didn't hold that first time, but there was no Arsenal player near enough to take advantage. Some more good work on the right though by Alan Sunderland there. Sammy Nelson, very composed on the ball, and here's Pat Rice. Brady. Now, which side can finish stronger at the end of this tiring season as Young plays the ball forward for Stapleton? Back heel meant for Rice, but... <laughs> And yours too there from Solsona. Beautifully done. Plays the ball down. Sigue, sigue, for Bonoff. Sigue. Bonoff is through here with Tempest just inside and it's Bonoff gone all the way. And Jennings saves. It's through Pat Jennings style. Threw himself down and got out of the legs or the body in the way. But Reiner Bonoff, a player of his quality. I wonder whether he should have scored. It's easy to say that from here. But he was clean through it, but the angle wasn't good, and Jennings came to narrow it anyway, on the post, on the six-yard line. He fell, Pat Jennings, and again, it nearly went through his legs, but not quite. Played short for Pablo. Sara. Well, that was a break by Valencia that Arsenal could well have done without, but Jennings saving the side again. Have a word from Bob when we get a break in play about that. But for the moment, there's plenty of action, which Di Stefano is doing his best 
from the bench to have a say in. And the free kick to be taken by Arias for Valencia. Willie Young's header out. Carete. Kempis and O'Leary. Kempis stripping his man. And the referee scuttles up to have a word with the Argentine World Cup star. 25 minutes gone, nearly 26 minutes in the second half. Arsenal nil, Valencia nil in the Cup Winners' Cup final. Ricks for Arsenal. Stapleton. Ricks. Talbot is well forward here. This is Brady. Still Brady, but in the end he ran into too many players. That's Pablo Solsona. Good challenge. Uh, oh, well, it was a foul, according to the referee. It was Ricks who went in. But he's certainly done his fair share of ball winning, Graham Ricks, in this second half. As he goes away there. The night sky gathering over the Heysel Stadium and over the Atomium. As Valencia prepare to launch their next attack. She's cut out by Willie Young. And now Brady appeals for a foul, but Pablo gets away with it. Subirats looks for Solsona. Kempis is in there as well, but so was O'Leary, staying close to him. Tendilio. Arias, Arsenal are pushing forward. They've checked a little bit now. What you bought? Carete on the far side. Actually, the uh, Valencia players building up again through Solsona, the man who impressed John, uh, Bob in the first half. That's Bonoff. Carete. Brady was back on the edge of his own penalty area there. That's Torbert shaking off Saura. That's a save that Pat Jennings has made so many times before with his feet. This is Brady. O'Leary. Sunderland. Kempis. Solsona. Nelson coming in on uh, Saura. The referee let the first one go and he let that one go. This is Talbot. Brady. Ricks. O'Leary and an Arsenal player down lying on the floor in the uh, Valencia half at the moment. Alan Sunderland, I think. This is Stapleton. I think that's Sunderland who's down. This is Rice. Ricks. And Tendilio comes away and still Sunderland's down. O'Leary cuts that out. And he's holding his face, Alan Sunderland, so he may have got an elbow off the ball. Tendilio! Certainly he was booked earlier, you may remember, for a little bit of a... Well, for a tripping offence on uh, Botchubot, the number three. And I wonder if Botchubot there might have put the elbow in when the ball was nowhere near them anyway. It's Sunderland now. He's turned him. Good cross. Stapleton goes in. Brady. Talbot. Bit of a mix-up in the defence. Ricks. Lifts one high for David Price. Well, a word first, Bob, about the save from Pat Jennings. Well, as you said, John, it's a save that he's made so many times before. When youngsters talk about Pat Jennings and idolise him, I say idolise him by all means, but don't copy him. You know, the majority of keepers go in would dive in in that situation. But Pat's reactions are so sharp and he, he's so brilliant with his feet. It's a much more open game now, and I think it's a brave man who would uh, predict the score. Well, they've got about 15 minutes to settle it in normal time. And here's Nelson for Arsenal. Sunderland tries to turn his man and gets a free kick, I would have thought, but uh, the referee said no. Pablo, away from Brady. Botchubot, Solsona. Pablo's wandered a lot more in the second half. That's him on the ball now. And it's Ricks trying to win it back. 
Pablo. Bonoff's made his run down the right wing, marked by Brian Talbot. Bonoff. Well, the linesman was closer than anybody else, and with 15 minutes to go in the second half, he gave the decision to Valencia. A few firecrackers still exploding around us from the Spanish fans as their team mounts another attack. Pablo de Sara. Still Sara with Nelson on the ground. A real tangle there. And Pat Jennings decides he'll come and claim the ball, and why not? Certainly the best way out of that little mess. And gives Arsenal the chance to draw breath and build up possession again with Torbett. Willie Young has pressed a long way forward in this attack. Here's Stapleton. And Young can stay forward now because Arsenal have got a throw. As Candelio got his foot in there. Brady cut it back for Ricks to shoot. It was going wide and out again. Oh, what a good effort. So close as Young came in at the far post there with Sunderland. That was the nearest Arsenal have been. Graham Ricks fired it with his left foot and it flew across the face of the goal. And as Sunderland came in, it was so, so close. Brady. O'Leary, Young, Brady, Stapleton is closing in here. Well, Valencia will look upon that as a real let-off, although the goalkeeper can't be, uh, can't go without credit. Well, there have been chances, there have been chances for Arsenal, and there have been chances for Valencia, but still, with 12 minutes to go, there's no score in the European Cup Winners' Cup final. That was Willie Young. Young's presence in the penalty area when Arsenal have attacked has been quite a factor. He's uh, occupied one and sometimes two defenders. But the goalkeeper was able to make a despairing save there from Sunderland. Here's Bonoff. Carete. And again. Sara, the captain of Valencia. And Rice, the Arsenal captain, takes the throw. It's Brady. Sara. Pablo has come down the left wing. Number 11. Kempis is in the centre. Being joined now by Solsona. Sara has made another run. Still Pablo. In the end, he found a way back to Rainer Bonoff. Right across for Karete. Avoided the challenge nicely. Solsona looks for a target, but doesn't find one with that. Well, that was a near thing at the other end, Bob. Well, it certainly was. I'm not sure that uh, Graham Ricks wasn't intending, in fact, to shot at goal there, but uh, it flew across the goal. Willie Young was getting in there, but uh, it's a pity Alan Sunderland perhaps didn't, uh, didn't uh, see it coming a little bit early, because in the end he had no alternative but to throw himself, almost like a human torpedo. And uh, the goalkeeper made a good save. In fact, both goalkeepers are keeping this game at nil-nil which is where it stands, with about 10 minutes to go in the second half. 10 minutes away then from extra time in the Cup Winners' Cup final, as if Arsenal's season hasn't been long enough. Nelson.
That's O'Leary. Pat Rice nearest us has just thrown away the shin pads and uh, rolled one sock down. He's pulled it up again now. He's taken his pads off. Stapleton to Price. Looking for Sunderland. Away by Arias. That was Willie Young. Now O'Leary. Can Arsenal draw on their huge reservoir of strength and energy in this last 10 minutes to snatch the goal that would mean glory at the end of this marathon season everybody in England will be hoping that they can but here's Sarah for Valencia Arias coming forward Solsona Sarah still Sarah shot hit Nelson Sarah still Bonoff Looks in the middle for Kempes, headed it back, but fortunately for Arsenal, straight to Price. And on the break, Arsenal have got three against Valencia's four. Stapleton. That was a foul. Mario! 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 Here's Brady. O'Leary Sunderland away by Pablo Kempis has started his run down this side O'Leary stretched but Young was covering this is O'Leary and now Brady again trying to engineer something through those Valencia ranks he's found Talbot who's found Stapleton Talbot pushed rather wide by the return but he's shaken off Karate. Young finding Nelson over on the far side. And the goalkeeper's giving it to Young. And he's got to get back now. He's back, actually. This is Talbot to Brady. Anxious moment, that one was for Pereira. He'd really committed himself. This is Nelson similar sort of ball he's attempting there this time Solsona took it out Ricks still Ricks good skill brilliant oh and Tendilio took it out it was a very very good clearance and vital too for Valencia with three Arsenal players coming onto the ball which is what uh, Bonoff's doing now free kick to Valencia Mario! against Brady Stefano demanding more effort from his side with seven minutes to go. Arias. Out to Carete. Still Carete. And Ricks was back in defence, tackling there. Had a good match, Graham Ricks. This is Price. The two strikers have made their runs. This is Talbot. Here's Stapleton. Sammy Nelson's in the attack now. This is Talbot, Nelson's in the center, waiting with Sunderland for the cross. And it was Pablo to whom it fell. And he finds Solsona. Casual ball, it looked, but it was beautifully played by Bonoff to Pablo. And now it's Subirats on the ball. Subirats tries to bend one round Jennings. And it all started with a very telling ball from Reiner Bonoff which got Subirats there, in behind the defence. And he tried to curl one, and it was some way wide. As you can see, the Arsenal players feeling the pace. After the exhausting programme that they've had to get through, the socks roll down, and several players' cases, and here's O'Leary. Only five minutes left of normal time. O'Leary to Sunderland. Arsenal throw. Brady. Sunderland. What a good effort that was again. David O'Leary has managed to join the attack once or twice, and Arsenal have really pushed players in, but it was Talbot there who came from midfield to make the telling header. But it is interesting how many players at times Arsenal have got forward. 
Torbert comes in there and heads wide. But none of the back four have been afraid to come up as well. Here's O'Leary. Only four minutes to go of normal time, followed by the strong possibility now of half an hour's extra time in the Cup Winners' Cup final. Arsenal nil, Valencia nil. This is Subirats. Tries to find Sara. Don Howe, Terry Neal and Wilf Dixon. Whose side summon more strength still. Brady. Brady to Price. Price's shot going away all the time. Do you fancy either side to settle it now, Bob, in the last three or four minutes or extra time? Well, <laughs> I wish one side would settle it, John, but uh, I don't think they're going to now, really. I think it's going to go into extra time. And, uh, well, I hope it's settled then because I think it will be dreadful if it's going to go to penalties. Well, that's the possibility. But Sunderland, looking for a possibility on the left, had no chance with the ball running out of play. Some uh, Chelsea fans may recall that their side in the Cup Winners' Cup final in 71 went to a replay with Real Madrid. That was the rule then, but it's since been changed. The match must be finished on the night now in the Cup Winners' Cup. Foul given against Kempis. And here's Ricks. Stapleton's made his run. Brady. Oh, players in the centre, waiting for a cross. Sunderland now. Price. Ricks. And Bonhoff uh, back there, chesting it down with all the calm arrogance of this player who looks now for Kempis. He's fighting away with O'Leary to try and get the better of him, and O'Leary fights back. It's a really compelling battle that, and O'Leary gets tremendous applause for shaking off Kempis and finding Torben. And now it's Ricks. And now it's Torbett again. Sunderland. Botchubot beat him, and he's given Valencia the chance of a break with Saura. Kempis is just behind him, but it's still Saura. And now it's Solsona. And Bonhoff's made a run through now into the inside left position. Saura, though. Sara to Subirats. And on the far side, it's Karete. Karete's cross. Willie Young's header out. Only about a minute of normal time left. Tendilio for Valencia. Pablo. It's nicely done by Pablo. Bonop, I think, has got a slight injury at the moment. He's certainly taken a breather and is walking back very, very slowly. But it's Valencia coming forward again now. Botchubot. Looks for Kempis, young in the way. Subirats. Saura. Subirats. And Rick's looking very, very cool, even at this crucial stage, with only seconds remaining in the 90 minutes. Brady gets fouled by Bonov. And the crowd beginning to settle themselves down, thinking it'll be extra time, but this is Torbett for Arsenal. Torbett for Stapleton. And now for Pat Rice. And now for Liam Brady. And this whistle's gone. Extra time. Resuscitation of all types now. And Arsenal and Valencia go into the extra half hour. And before we hear from the panel back in London. Let's have a quick word from Bob Wilson. Well, Arsenal are going to have to call on all sorts of unknown reserves now, really, after uh, Saturday's uh, sapping, really, final against West Ham. And uh, I think, really,
the panel at home must feel that it's been a much more entertaining second half. We've seen uh, we've seen people really running at defenders a little bit more, a little bit more entertaining all the way around. There's Don Howe, and he's going to have a big job now to uh, lift these players once again with Terry Neal. But they've done it against Liverpool, haven't they? So let's hope they can do it again. The season that for Arsenal just refuses to end. Roger Thompson and Wilf Dixon pouring the drinks. The substitutes seem in a good frame of mind. Indeed, one or both of them may well get used now. Let's just go back very quickly and hear what uh, Jimmy and his colleagues think about things. Have you revised your opinion, Laurie? I think that, uh, like we said at half-time, whenever Brady got forward and Richie got forward, they looked as good as any fair on the field. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to see them do that more often, but it's like the lads out there said, it, it's, it's whether they've got the legs on them now, and the, we were just trying to count up how many games they've had, and it's nearly 70 now, isn't it? And yeah. it must be catching up. The, the two front runners, uh, Stapleton and Sunderland, really look tired lads, you know, and uh, they've covered some miles this season. But uh, I wonder if they'll think about making a substitution. I'm looking at the list here. You've got lads like John Hollands with a tremendous amount of experience. Mm. Um, he might just be the sort of lad to go on for somebody like David Price. And I don't know what John and Bob think out there, but David Price is not involved too much at this end, and uh, maybe he's just doing a good job filling in. Trev, would you make a substitution? I think uh, it could be a good time to bring on somebody. The lad, Vassen, who's a striker and got the header in Italy, uh, could be interesting to see him come on. But I think the lads, they must be drained. Um, and certainly some of the lads do look tired and uh, extra, I think they can have two substitutes in fact so I wouldn't think it a bad thing to bring two on really just to give mm. the side a couple of uh, extra people fresh and uh, can run at the Spanish team um, it's very delicately based I think uh, the, in the second half uh, Arsenal did push yeah. more men forward Graham Ricks had a couple of very good runs and Liam Brady had a good shot and it was terribly yeah, unlucky yeah, when yeah. Alan Sunderland just missed with the header the keeper made a good save uh, they're the sort of chances that really they'd love to go in at this moment. Bob, if you were going to make the substitutions, you know the Arsenal squad so well, what, what would you think would be the wisest ones to make? I don't think they should make any substitution at all at this moment in time. I think they should stick with those lads who, in fact, I think of, uh, if anything, I know it sounds a little bit silly at this moment when they do look tired and they're taking their rest, but they, they've got stronger as a team throughout the 90 minutes. And that, I feel that in the second half, they did create two or three quite good chances and uh, as I heard you say at half time you'd like to see people running at the defence I think they did that and uh, it's just unfortunate perhaps that Alan Sunderland's header didn't go in I think they'll stick as they are for this moment in time yeah Graham Ricks of course made that beautiful run at the defence and having seen Maradona last night I'm just wondering whether he's going to set a style of players a new fashion in a way in English football of players who are going to have the courage and the will to do that would you see that Trev? Yes, I think, uh, actually, Ron Green was always encouraged people running with the ball and running at defenders. On the continent, they do that naturally, and, of course, where Kevin plays in West Germany, often mm. the sweeper from the back comes forward, and they mark man to man, and if you happen to go past your defender, it means that you have to commit somebody else, and to run at defenders is, is a terrific skill these days, and Graham made two or three good runs in the second half there. Liam Brady does it as well, and, mm. you know, that sort of run in extra time when the legs are a bit heavy, could be the difference between uh, creating yeah. a goal. That's why I like to see them up near the edge of the box, don't you? Because runs that people deeper, like around about the halfway line, are often wasted. But yeah. uh, certainly, uh, I would agree with Bob. I wouldn't necessarily make a substitution at this minute because often an extra time, the, you, you've battled away for 90 minutes and then all of a sudden, in the first two minutes of extra time, something happens and it's yeah. all over. Uh, I think uh, uh, Terry and Don Howe will probably give it 10 minutes anyway. Yeah. I think David uh, Leary deserves special mention. I think yes. he had a brilliant second half in particular. Yeah. A brave header when it looked very dangerous and he's, he made a great tackle out on the line on Kempis and he's done a terrific job yes. on him all game. He's, he's winning that battle with Kempis and it, I, I mean, uh, to support Bob's point of view, I mean, Arsenal don't look beaten. They look as if they're in with a very as good a chance certainly as Valencia of winning the match, but it's just a question of how they're going to find the killer blow. So we just uh, don't want it to go to penalties, that's all. We don't <laughs> want it to go to penalties, so <laughs> it might be quite exciting, but now you can see they're kicking off, uh, and we'll go back uh, to John Mott. Thank you, Jimmy. And just one statistical point. Uh, in European football this season, in the three competitions, there have been 258 matches, and not one of them has gone to penalties. So I wonder if... <laughs> The only match to go to penalties this season could be a final. It certainly will be if nobody scores in the next half hour. And Arsenal, who are now going to play...
from right to left in the first period of extra time will kick off. So the team's playing the way they were at the very start. And still no goals. Just a reminder about the substitutes rule, you can use any two from the five. And I won't uh, worry you with the rules about penalties until or unless it happens. Half an hour's extra time first, 15 minutes each way in the Cup Winners' Cup final of 1980. Arsenal in the yellow shirts against Valencia in all white. Ricks for Arsenal. Stapleton. Arias. Here's Bonoff. Had one of the chances that could have settled the match. Was denied by Jennings. Looks for Kempis. O'Leary with him as always. I think the referee is going to uh, give a free kick there. Shoving by Kempis on O'Leary. Needless to say, we shall be staying live here in Brussels till the end of this Cup Winners' Cup final, but the news naturally will follow on afterwards. And the man hoping to make some news in the next few minutes, Liam Brady. Looks for Sunderland. Sunderland bent one in, but much too close to the goalkeeper. Pereira, who made a couple of useful saves in that second half. Arsenal, in fact, are at this moment warming up all their substitutes just in case. Running up and down the track, all by, by Paul Barron. That was Subirat looking for Saura. Away by O'Leary. Tendilio. Botubot. Saura. Flag was up anyway for offside there. Nelson. And this is Pablo. Bonoff's made a run. Solsona. Arias comes from the back. Kempis peels away to the inside left position. Ricks gets a foot in again. Done some good defensive work, Graham Ricks, and some nice attacking play from him too. He's got Sunderland in the centre. Stapleton further back at the moment. Still Ricks. Trying to get it back from Carete. And Carete working hard to set up Valencia. Ricks again gets the foot in. Good tackle, he played the ball. Torbert. Sunderland, no. Runs on towards Kempis. Here's O'Leary. Price, still Arsenal, show the energy and the concentration and ambition that you would think would have been drained from lesser sides before now. Brady's cross. Torbert's momentum taking him way off the pitch. Kick towards Kempis. Shoved by O'Leary, says the referee. Free kick to Valencia. Pat Rice was spoken to for kicking the ball away there. Now, what will Bonoff engineer from this free kick? Solsona. Solsona shot. Good effort by this industrious midfield player who in fact cost £450,000 when he was signed by Valencia from Espanyol of Barcelona. And that remains the highest domestic transfer fee between two Spanish clubs. Solsona number six who hit that shot.
Willie Young for Arsenal. Stapleton. Oh, that's a nice turn of pace by Frank Stapleton. Tendilio was stretching, which he had to do at the expense of a corner. Got a feeling that we might be seeing John Hollins very shortly as an Arsenal substitute. There is some sign of activity on the bench, but for the meantime, we stay with the play and Brady's corner. Goalkeeper punching and away by Pablo. Here's Ricks. Oh, what a drive. It hit Reiner Bonoff in the small of the back and he's gone down as though he was poleaxed. That's a foul by Willie Young. Clear case of obstruction when the man had gone past him. And uh, Pablo's making the most of that. But Bonoff is absolutely curled up in pain. He's not in your picture at the moment. But he got that shot from Ricks right in the small of the back. And he... <laughs> He's wringing his hands with anxiety because if you just watch the way... If we're going to see it again, we're going to see the Willie Young foul, in fact, rather than the shot. But uh, that drive from Ricks was going at tremendous pace and it really hammered into Bonoff. So, a free kick to Valencia in the first period of extra time with no score. Nelson still looking very cool at left back. That's Sunderland. Then Ricks. Now then, can he... Oh, just too far ahead of Brady because Arias was there. Brady pushed well forward in that attack. And here's Arias again. Bonoff is waving his colleagues forward, saying, let's really have a go at it now. It's very late in the day to do anything else but push players up and hope that one side can settle it. Here's Pablo. Here's Bonoff. Nobody would really want penalties, surely, although Bonoff will have memories of the European Championship final, 76, when Czechoslovakia beat West Germany on penalties. So Leary's slip, Kempis. Bonoff. Kempis. What a scramble. Kempis, in the end, was just crowded out. Brady cools things down. Soda! Soda! Brian Talbot coming forward. Soda! Matt Rice also, Alan Sunderland with Botubot, who's been shadowing him all night. Number three, still Sunderland though. Brady. Brady to Ricks. And the header out has found Pablo. Kempis is ahead of him and Bonoff's joined the attack as well. Here's Kempis. Solsona, Carete, Carete's ball in and O'Leary's header out. Halfway through the first period of extra time and still no score. And neither so far have there been any substitutions. That's Carete, the number two. Bonoff. Oh, is he giving a free kick against Nelson for the foul on Sarah? Yes. Arias and Tendilio have both made their way forward. Kempis drives one, and it was bending, but not enough. On the right-hand side of the penalty area, they use Kempis to try and bend them with his left foot round the wall, round the goalkeeper, but on that occasion, he was wide. Di Stefano wondering if his side can settle it in extra time. And 15,000 Arsenal fans wondering if theirs can, plus all those watching at home. Here's Rice. Price to Talbot. 
Price in the middle is Alan Sunderland coming in now. That's his header, but no power. Did well, in fact, to beat uh, Botubot. Kick is too long for Kempis. Uh, O'Leary's header wasn't sure, though, and Rice had to cover Kempis. Five minutes left in the first period of extra time and the tension showing itself on the bench and on the field. Stapleton, that's a good header on if Talbot could get there. It's asking a tremendous a lot for a man to <laughs> make runs like that now. This is Karete. Bonoff, Ricks tries to get in. Vamos, vamos! Here's Arias. Well, what drama we shall have here if it goes to penalties. Bonoff. Karete. And now it's Pablo. Still Pablo. And looks for Kempis and O'Leary stretching just made it. Arsenal with Ricks. Fed across to Stapleton, but it's just asking too much of him, that. Still no score. Arias. Just under four minutes left in the first period of extra time here in the Cup Winners' Cup final, and neither side able to finish off one of several promising moves that each have had. This is Brady. Sunderland makes his run down the right. The linesman says onside. That's Bochu Bot was with him, but the referee has penalised Alan Sunderland. So then, number 10, Javier Subirat for Valencia, no score. Carete. Bonoff. Subirat. Solsona. Beautiful skill. Carete. Solsona, Subirats, Kempis, Subirats, Price, Jennings. Another piece of unfussy work by David Price, and he's there waiting for the throw out from his goalkeeper. And now also with his socks rolled down, Sammy Nelson. Stapleton. Price, Brady, Price, Sunderland, just holding it up slightly for Price to come in. Stapleton has pulled away at the far post, but Price couldn't get round Tendilio. But a minute and a half left in the first period of extra time, Solsona for Valencia. Down the line is Sara making a run. Kempis has gone deep, Pablo. Sara, Bonoff. Pablo continues his run with Pat Rice marking him. Solsona. Pablo, Pablo, number 11. Header out by Brian Talbot. And again, Arsenal try and muster up some energy to make a break. This is Sunderland looking for Stapleton. Marathon men now this season, all these Arsenal players. They've gone so far, but can they glitch the major prize in the last minute of the first period of extra time? Still no score. The referee's looked at his watch twice. On by Subirats, but there's no chance of Kempis getting there. O'Leary's got all the time in the world.
right eight. Nelson. O'Leary. This is Young. Price is well forward in the attack again. This is Talbot. Now Sunderland letting it run on, but not as far as David Price. Instead, Carete, but the referee has flown for the end of the first period of extra time. And we'll just keep our eye open now to see. The referee is waving the trainers off. He won't allow... This is a UFA ruling that when extra time is being played, the teams must change straight round. And referee Christoph wants to prevent anybody going to the bench from, from massage or attention or even a glass of milk, as in the case of uh, Rainer Bonhoff. The Arsenal bench, where there was some activity earlier, John Hollins has got his tracksuit bottoms off. The official attendance, by the way, has been given to us here at this Cup Winners' Cup final. It's 40,000 in the Heysel Stadium. And a reminder for those of you who are watching in England that the national news will follow when this Cup Winners' Cup final finally ends, which could be after a further period of extra time and then penalties. And now a substitution by Arsenal, and it looks like John Hollins. John Hollins, who played in the Cup Winners' Cup final for Chelsea against Real Madrid nine years ago. He didn't play in the replay because he was injured, but he played in the first match. And he comes on now for David Price. Arsenal exchanging a midfield player. So Hollins, who they bought for a bargain fee at the beginning of the season. Paul Barron in the picture there, and uh, the bench just settling down again as Price goes off. So, 15 more minutes before we have penalties to settle this European Cup Winners' Cup final, and the score is still. Valencia who are kicking off, nil, Arsenal, nil. Arsenal now playing, left to right. And it's Subirat for Valencia. Bonov, Kempis. Pablo. Bonov looks for Pablo on the inside of Pat Rice. It'll come back for Solsona. Bonoff, Pablo. Still Pablo. And still Pablo. Free kick given against Liam Brady. Ariat was at the back. Two players taking a tumble and the referee calling that evens. So just a reminder of the Arsenal substitution. John Hollins on for David Price. We're in the second minute of the second period of extra time. And this is Pat Rice. Liam Brady, who will be one of the five penalty takers if Arsenal have to go to penalties. Here's Hollins. Hollins cross. Oh, Stapleton was coming in on that. This is Brady. A chance of a shot by Brady. And it skids off a defender. Arias, in fact, it was. John Hollins with the header. Firecrackers in the background from the Spanish supporters. Arsenal's fans doing their best again to lift a side who by now have been through just about every hurdle this season of examination and tiredness. This is Solsona to Subirat. On the far side, Carete for Valencia. Plays it back inside again. 
Subirat. Botubot. Bonos made a run, but that's near to Jennings. Torbett's made his run down the left wing. Look at that. What energy. In the centre, Sunderland and Stapleton. Brady now for Arsenal. Kemp is trying to track him back. Now Nelson. Oh, and Kempis did get a foot in, but a free kick's been given anyway. And it's been taken quickly by Arsenal to O'Leary. This is Rice. Big Willie Young is up there, stretching. Following up is Ricks. On this side is David O'Leary. And Sunderland tries to get in. Stapleton, this is. O'Leary. Sunderland, no! No, offside. Offside when the ball was originally played to O'Leary. No goal. David O'Leary in the attack, trying to bend the ball in, but he was offside there when he crossed the ball before Alan Sunderland ran in and finished things off. So the ball in the net, but the linesman's flag clearly raised. Here's Subirat. Kempis. Oh, it's going to come on to Saura. And Saura took it just a bit too far, and O'Leary did very, very well to make the angle impossible for him. Well, now, is somebody going to snatch it? The signs are that Di Stefano sees an opportunity for his side, but Arsenal have got theirs too. Here's Brady. Ricks. Still Ricks. And still Ricks. Looks to the referee that he was shoved, but there's a goal kick given. Arsenal flags. Just saw them in the background there as Ricks somehow finds enough energy to get back to his defensive position. Kempis. Hollins. Looks for Sunderland. Oof. Taken out there. And a good thing it was too by Botubot for Valencia. Good thing for Valencia, that is. Solsona looks for Kempis. O'Leary is with him. And a lovely header by David O'Leary. Cool under pressure, even at this late stage. And John Hollins. Valencia are warming up Castellanos, one of their substitutes. This is Sunderland. This is Stapleton. And this is Subirat to Pablo. Pablo again, Solsona, forward runs by five Valencia players here, Solsona, Pablo, still Pablo, and it was a shot by Solsona in the end, with over six minutes gone, and Castellanos, the bearded midfield player, who actually can more or less play anywhere, he's appeared in all positions this season, Angel Castellanos is going to come on and the man going off will be Subirac, the number 10. So both sides now have made one of their permitted two substitutions. I ought to remind you that only players who are on the field at the time the match ends can take penalties in the competition. Here's Brady, normally the Arsenal first choice penalty taker anyway. Collins, nicely out to Ricks, Sunderland is in there, well taken by the goalkeeper, as Sunderland closed in, Carete, Bonoff, Nelson in, Arias, Kempes, Solsona, Oh, it's going to come out to Sarah, but it was well headed first by Nelson, and now it's Brady. John Hollins has made a run, a run from midfield. That's for Sunderland, though. Botubot's header. 
and it's finally picked up by Arias who finds Solsona Carete to Castellanos man who's just come on Reiner Bonos out on the right wing at the moment Kempis is playing deep now and they pushed Arias forward and Castellanos makes a run this is Pablo Pablo to Castellanos Castellanos a nice turn <laughs> and then lost control well we are eight and a half minutes into the first the second period of extra time and the first European club competition final to be settled by penalty kicks looks imminent now This is Pat Rice. Funny that Uli Hernes should be in the stadium because he was the man who missed the penalty in Belgrade in 76 when they settled the big European Championship final that way. But there's still a few minutes to go here yet. Brady. Willie Young is well forward. Gets up well too. Willie Young again. It's Young, charged down the shot. And in trying to win it back, Willie Young finished up on the floor. And it's a break by Valencia with Bonoff going down the right wing there with O'Leary. Torbett. Nelson. Ricks, who's shown that turn of speed and ability to go past people all right tonight. Look at that. Oh, he's been brought down. Carete, the number two. Yellow card. Yellow card for Carete. Graham Ricks was just picking up pace. He'd beaten the player and he had his legs taken from him. So a free kick to Arsenal. Young is forward again, of course. Taken by Nelson. That's Young putting it back in and some pushing by Willie Young, says the referee, before Mario Kempis cracked the ball away. Well, now, we're, what, four and a half minutes away from penalty kicks. The Arsenal players didn't know until last night, by the way, that penalties would be used. They thought there would be a replay until they were informed of the new UFA ruling. Castellanos heading it on. Hollins. But there's still time in these last four minutes for somebody to settle it the normal way. Pat Rice. Castellanos. Kempis. Oh, and Kempis just losing out to O'Leary. And uh, there's a few nerves jangling out there now. I think nobody wants to make the critical error at this late stage. And the Valencia supporters in front of me as Terry Neal exhorts his team have kept the ball for a moment, which is the reason for the delay on the field. It's finally been retrieved. And it's young for Arsenal. He looks for Stapleton, and this is Bonoff. Well, presumably Bonoff and Kempis would be among the Valencia penalty takers, should it go that far. Dead ball experts. Young. Stapleton. On this side was Brady. It was uh, Pablo that got back. Castellanos to Saura, who's got Kempis forward. It's Saura. It's Castellanos. And it's too long for either of his colleagues. And Bryce hesitated with... Uh, Hollins rather hesitated with Willie Young. But in the end, John Hollins turned the ball back and got up forward as well, as you could see. That's Brady. Now Pat Rice, the Arsenal captain. Two and a half minutes left. Nelson. Ricks. Stapleton with Tendilio appeals for handball. Stapleton. Still Stapleton.
Frank Stapleton penalised. There are two minutes left on my watch of extra time. Two minutes away from settling the European Cup Winners' Cup in a penalty competition. So, if that happens, we really will be holding our breath. Kempis is the target for this. Over O'Leary's head it goes, and back by Pat Rice. Looking for Sunderland. Hollins with the throw. Sunderland's cross. Here comes O'Leary. Offside against John Hollins. And there's just a minute to go. Solsona. Pablo. Referee blows. And as he does so, there are only about 40 seconds of extra time left on my watch. The score is still nil-nil. Bonhoff has pushed well forward for the free kick. So has Kempis, of course, as O'Leary's header out, and now Liam Brady. Oh, beautifully done by Brady. Talbot. In the final seconds now, the referee's checked his watch yet again. And he's going to blow any second here, and he has, and it's penalties. Well, well, well. Let me start by explaining what happens now. For those of you who have not seen a European tie settled this way, we've had extra time, or prolongation as they call it out here, and there's no score. And so each side now will take five penalty kicks, and it's a question of who scores from the most. Every kick, obviously, must be taken by a different player. Arsenal nominated among their penalty takers, I do know Alan Sunderland and Liam Brady were going to take one. So too was Brian Talbot. David Price was mentioned, but he's gone off and been substituted. So we shall wait and see who actually steps up. But this is history being made here, with the European Cup Winners' Cup being settled by a penalty competition. And anybody who was in Belgrade in 76 and saw the end of the European Championship, when Czechoslovakia the country of that referee's origin, beat West Germany. No one will forget the way Uli Hernes put one over the bar and gave the Czechs victory. And there'll be some taut nerves out there now as the two teams decide who takes their kicks. Not a very satisfactory way to settle a European competition, I'm sure you would agree. And there'll be arguments about that, whether there should be a replay or whether in fact it should be decided by this sudden death method. That's a debate that you can all join in, but the fact remains that penalties now will be used here in the Heysel Stadium to determine who wins the Cup Winners' Cup and, of course, goes into the same competition as holders next season. That's how much is at stake as Di Stefano checks the rules, I'm sure, with referee Hristov, because some of the people involved in the match weren't even aware until last night that penalties would be used. We'll stay with the action here, although, obviously, there will be a slight delay while the referee decides exactly which end he's going to go to. John Hollins, full of experience. I wonder if he'll be called upon. Certainly, Brady would appear to be a favourite to take one for Arsenal. He scored from six penalties this season. And he must be reflecting on what a strange way this is to end a tournament as long as this one. The news will follow, incidentally, <laughs> eventually, when this Cup Winners' Cup final finally draws its last breath. Well, apart from jangling nerves of those players who've got to step up and take those penalties, this is, of course, now a story between uh, one very experienced and great goalkeeper, Pat Jennings, against the much younger one, the man with the beard, Carlos Pereira. They, too, are now going to call upon their own nerve and uh, talent and skill and 
What a, a marvellous way it would be, I suppose, to Pat, who is drawing to the conclusion of his career and still performing miracles, but certainly only another year, two years perhaps ahead of him, if he could pull off another of his, well, fantastic achievements in a most marvellous career. Well, there's Pat Jennings with uh, Pereira, and obviously the discussion involves the goalkeepers more than anybody, because I would imagine that Terry Neal is perhaps being asked to tell the referee who his five kickers are at this stage. And just standing around waiting are the men who I think will take them. Liam Brady, Frank Stapleton, Brian Talbot, Alan Sunderland, and I rather think John Hollins. Those would be my five looking at the pitch as I do from up here, because the other Arsenal players have gone back on the bench. In fact, Graham Ricks has turned away even at this stage. I shouldn't think somebody will be able to look, but Stapleton's out there. And I think now Pat Jennings is going to the left-hand goal, inspired by Pat Rice, who is giving him a tremendous piece of motivation in his own captain style. And we shall see Mario Kempis, maybe, step forward against Pat Jennings, and open this competition, five penalties each, a question of who scores the most. Now, just bear in mind that last night on a video, Pat Jennings saw Kempis take two penalties. The reason he saw him take two was because Kempis was forced to retake one against Nantes in the Cup Winners' Cup semi-final. I must say, having said that, but he scored both times. It had to be retaken because of encroachment. But if Kempis does step forward to take the first one, I wonder if Pat will know which side it's going to go. Bob? Well, just thinking back to that video that we did watch last night, uh, the first penalty that Kempis took in that game against Nantes, he ran up, checked his stride, and then placed it to the goalkeeper's right. Uh, we think it was ungentlemanly conduct, if not encroachment, that he was made to take it. Right. And on the second penalty, he took up, uh, he just simply ran up to the ball and with that famous left foot, struck it as hard as he could. And the ball went in the middle of the goal and Pat and I remarked about that incident. Well, hold your breath because we're about to get going any moment. The referee, for whom this is also a new experience, obviously, has double-checked the rules. He's talked to both his linesmen. He's got everybody else off the pitch. He's talked to both managers and he's now walking forward with the ball. And it's Mario Kempis the man who won the World Cup for Argentina against Pat Jennings, the man who saved so many matches for Arsenal. You couldn't ask for two greater protagonists with which to start this unique competition. And Pat saved it! Jennings has saved from Kempis. What a start for Arsenal. He took it with his famous left foot and Pat knew which way it was going to go. And what a save. Now then, don't, don't lose track of this. Even if Brady scores, it's not over or anything. They have to take five in the first instance each. But Brady can give Arsenal a telling lead here if he beats Pereira. So, we've seen one left-footed player fail, what can Brady do with his? Bob Wilson here is himself hardly daring to watch. They're turning away on the Arsenal bench. But don't forget, this is just the beginning of the competition. Brady against Pereira. Oh, and he saved it as well! Goodness me! We're back to square one again. They both missed. Liam Brady went for the goalkeeper's left. And Pereira must have moved. Look, he moved his feet. And surely that should have been retaken, in my view, from here. But you can argue about that yourselves. It's no goal. It's one penalty each taken and no score. Now then. Solsona then. Against Jennings. A goal! Struck with all the venom of a man who knew he was going to score. Daniel Solsona, oh, he hammered that. And Jennings, even then, threw himself to his right, but it flew into the net above him. Frank Stapleton has got to score to level it now at one all. This is Arsenal's second kick. What drama here. 
stifles it. Puts it away. So it's one all. Stapleton with his right foot. The goalkeeper made another good attempt to save that, actually. So it's one all with two kicks each taken and three kicks each to go. Unless, of course, it's level and then it's sudden death. Pablo. And Pablo scores to make it 2-1 and put the pressure back on Arsenal. And I think Alan Sunderland. Pablo is a left-footed player and he beat Pat Jennings down in his right-hand corner. Now, can Alan Sunderland make it 2-2 with Arsenal's third kick? Pereira, the goalkeeper, being told to get back on his line. Sunderland. Goal! Pereira moved again, as a matter of fact, but it's in. I think this goalkeeper's moving all the time from these. Anyway, it's a goal. It's 2-2. And Castellanos has come forward, and it's crucial now. If anybody misses now, it could be fatal. Castellanos is allowed to take it because, as a substitute, he was on the field of play at the time the game ended. Castellanos against Jennings. Oh, it was in on the underside of the bar, I think. I think it actually probably went in off the underside here. Castellanos making it 3-2 to Valencia. And it went in off the underside of the bar. A bit fortunate, maybe. But Brian Torbert under immense pressure here. After this, there's still one each to be taken. Torbert for Arsenal. Oof! When it went in... Now then, it's going to be 3-3 three, three with one each to take. And Reiner Bonhoff, as we see Torbert's penalty go in again there, he put it right in the corner, didn't he? Keeper went near it again, though. Reiner Bonhoff comes forward. And I think it may be Johnny Hollins to take it after this for Arsenal, their last kick. But Bonhoff, the scores are level. Bonhoff aims to put... Valencia into a 4-3 lead, and there's pandemonium on the touchline. Bonhoff now. Scores! And Hollins must score to keep Arsenal in the competition. Bonhoff has made it 4-3 to Valencia, and if John Hollins misses, then Arsenal have been beaten. But if he scores, then other players have got to be recruited from the bench to continue the competition in sudden death fashion. John Hollins, after all these years in the game, and Paul Barron, no wonder he looks concerned. And he scored! Well, there's no greater pressure than that. And now we're 4-4, and it's sudden death. In other words, the, the actual competition is over, but it's square. So now each side will go on taking them until somebody misses. Different players each time still. But, of course, even if you miss, the other side must have the chance to put theirs away and vice versa. It's got to be an equal number taken by each team. And again, the referee explains what's going on. And Bonhoff discussing it with the linesman. But as I understand it, Bonhoff can't take another one until every other member of the team has taken one. And then it might even go to the goalkeepers as it wants it in the charity shield at Wembley pre-season. But those two men each made a great save and then saw themselves beaten by the other eight kicks. There's a slight delay because other players are being pulled off the bench and it's got to be decided now who takes the next one for each side. The score on penalties is 4-4 and still they can't settle the destination of the European Cup Winners' Cup.
De Stefano out on the field, and there isn't a calmer man in the stadium, it would appear, than Pat Jennings. And a great piece of gentlemanly sportsmanship between the two goalkeepers. They both know just how much is at stake, and I don't know whether Willie Young's going to take one, because there's a conversation gone on there. And uh, those of you still waiting for the national news, I'm sure will bear with us just for a few more minutes to see a form of European football history being made here at the end of Arsenal's titanic season. They've got to decide this on penalties, and Don Howe must be wondering, well, would it, anybody have thought it would have come to this? Just to remind you that Kempis and Brady each took the first kick and each had their kick saved. Solsona, Pablo, Castellanos and Bonoff scored for Valencia. Stapleton, Sunderland, Torbert and Hollins scored for Arsenal, and we're into sudden death. And the delay has been caused by the referee checking now on the order that new players will now take penalties. Arias, I think, will be the first Valencia player, their number four, and I would then think it might well be Graham Ricks. Well, if you feel at home this has been a long season, I shouldn't imagine that you thought we'd ever get into a situation quite of this making. At the end of a European final, it's four all on penalties and Pat Jennings goes back in goal to face the tall centre-back, Ricardo Arias. This is sudden death now. It's a question of each side taking one until somebody misses with the even number of kicks taken. Arias. Oh, it just went in underneath Pat Jennings, I think. Or perhaps just to one side of him. Just see it again here. Arias hit it with his right foot a little bit nervously, I thought. But as Jennings goes to the right, it does, in fact, go just by his arm. So, Graham Ricks has to score to keep Arsenal alive. If he misses, Valencia win. That's why Arsenal, taking their penalties second, are under greater pressure until Valencia miss another one. Graham Ricks, as Paul Barron watches again, there are one or two of them actually who uh, don't really want to watch this. But now Ricks. Oh, he saved it! And Valencia have won the Cup Winners' Cup because Graham Ricks' penalty was saved by Carlos Pereira. And the Valencia players go wild with delight. And poor Graham Ricks, the sort of situation no player would ever want. He's being consoled by his teammates as we see the replay. But believe me, that goalkeeper moved on at least three of them. And if you wanted to apply the rules literally, you could say it should have been retaken. And we've never been hit by a firecracker here. And Ricks is consoled. And Arsenal have been beaten. And Valencia have won the Cup Winners' Cup in a penalty competition, which went to sudden death. And Arias scored for Valencia. And Rick's penalty for Arsenal was saved by Carlos Pereira, who I believe moved. But at the end of 120 minutes, we didn't have a goal. And then on penalties, Valencia beat Arsenal 5-4. They win the Cup Winners' Cup. They're in the competition next season. And poor Arsenal have lost the second final in five days. But what a cruel way in which to lose it. From the Heysel Stadium, back to London. Well, how about that for a night of action to close a day of action? And we close now with thanks to our panel and to our commentators there in Brussels. And we close with that sad penalty miss by Graham Riggs, which meant that in the space of four days, Arsenal played two cup finals and came away with nothing. Good night. <laughs>